As future educators, it's our responsibility, or at least partly our responsibility, to give students the resources and motivation to be active for life. The goal of this video is to give teachers the basic reasons and resources to transition to a new method of teaching PE. The approach we present in this video is called the Clinic Game Day Method. This method is a hybrid of TGFU and sport education, which we will also go over in this video. Creating a desirable program that incorporates activities in order to address all the learning domains – cognitive, affective, psychomotor, and social – motivates students to learn and creates an environment where understanding is emphasized is not an easy task. What Alexander and Penny have attempted to create is a hybrid model that incorporates all of these characteristics into one approach, called the Clinic Game Day model. What we aim to do is make transitioning a little bit easier for people and to educate people that it is possible to transition teaching methods. Hi, my name is Carlita Brandon-Cayas. I'm in the kinesiology program here at the University of Victoria. Being physically active is super important to me. I play on the soccer team. Uh, it's been something I've done my whole life. <laughs> Being active for life uh, is really important to me and I think that it should be something that everybody thinks is important. My name is Jesse Young and I'm in the PE program at UVic. I also think being active for life is super important and think that everyone should appreciate being active and the benefits that come along with that. I think as future educators it's our responsibility, or at least partly our responsibility, to give students the resources and motivation to be active for life. As you know, we're both students and we're learning lots of new stuff every day and uh, we talked a lot about the dropout rate from PE in high school. Now both of us were pretty active in high school, um, we really enjoyed PE, um, we, I went every day, I didn't skip it, um, but I did have lots of friends that didn't like going and at the time I didn't really think a lot of it. You know, they didn't like PE, they weren't coordinated, they, they didn't enjoy it and that was kind of the end of it. Being in a classroom environment and learning about it from a different perspective it brought up a lot of issues and a lot of questions that both Jesse and I thought were really interesting and you know why is this happening what's the trend we know there's a growing obesity rate um, to also take into consideration are they related I'm not sure I think what Carlita brought up uh, I agree with in physical education a lot of my friends didn't like it mostly because they weren't good at what was being taught the traditional method uh, taught in physical education is called the multi-activity method and students are subjected to one activity for six classes and then we move on before kids really get the chance to get good at something or uh, learn new skills. Being in a skill-based classroom, a lot of people struggle uh, that aren't very athletic and aren't given the opportunity to try different methods or approaches to playing games. The goal of this video is to give teachers the basic reasons and resources to transition to a new method of teaching PE that will more thoroughly support being active for life. The approach we present in this video is called the Clinic Game Day Method. This method is a hybrid of TGFU and sport education, which we will also go over in this video. Teaching games for understanding is a very learner-centered way of approaching physical education. The goal of TGFU is to move away from skill-centered teaching and move more towards tactical awareness. Teaching tactical aspects of games before skills, instead of practicing skills first, can lead to higher transfer. Students will first learn how to play the game, rules of the game, tactical awareness, and decision-making associated with those games. Once these areas are developed, skill execution and performance can be focused on. Here we see Bunker and Thorpe's six-stage model of TGFU, which was created in 1982. The six stages should be presented and focused on in chronological order. The areas of this six-stage model that I want to focus on are two, three, and four. Phase two is game appreciation. Game appreciation helps learners develop an appreciation for how the rules, skills, and strategies all influence each other within a game. Stage three, tactical awareness, 
give students an opportunity to figure out what tactics they can use to gain an up on their opponent. Number four, decision making is often overlooked in physical education as well, as we are so used to focusing on skills. Decision making is important for transfer of skills from practice into games. If someone knows how to kick a ball but doesn't know where to put it or how hard to kick it in an actual game, what good are these skills if they can't be used in games? Creating an environment where tactical awareness is experienced in questions is also extremely important to TGFU. Students will be able to ask themselves questions about when should a skill be executed or how much force should be applied to an object to make it go in a certain direction. What are the chances of my decisions being successful or unsuccessful? These are very, very important for transfer into real sports and, and real life situations. This is a basic task model, which is used to modify games in TGFU. This creates fun and challenge for everyone based on different skill levels. The basic task is the modified game to be played as a representation of an actual game. When the task is refined, students are given cues on what to move, how to move, where to move, and moving in relation to an object or person. This can benefit students who are having trouble asking and answering tactical problems for themselves. If a task is too difficult for students, it can be simplified. This makes it less challenging through modifications of space, task, equipment, or players. In an extension task, it can be made more challenging through these modifications. At the end of a class, you want to have an application task, which is usually some sort of game that students are working towards during their practice period. Here we see the different modifications used through the acronym STEP. The first modification is space, which can be modified through size and shape. Another important one is equipment. You can use different types of equipment and different amounts of equipment. TGFU uses three different types of modification, representation, exaggeration, and adaptation. Through representation, many games are played to suit the characteristics of the learner, such as age and ability. Exaggeration is using rules to exaggerate different tactical problems. So I noticed that you guys aren't using the entire space that you have, so I'm going to start a rule where before you get in the end zone, you must pass to the outside of both sidelines. The third is modification by adaptation, which is used to increase challenge of one student while maintaining current challenge of another. This type of modification is also seen in sport education and the clinic game day method. Here we see Tim in green playing Bob who is in orange. They are both starting on one quarter of a court. If Tim were to score the first point, he would extend his court to half. The game would continue this way until one student hit full court. What allows this method of modification to be so successful is its automatic adaptation to the students playing the game. Modification occurs when points are scored, creating a more challenging environment for the winner while maintaining the current challenge level for the other. The student who wins in the end may not always be the initial winner as both players have had time to adapt and take advantage of the changing structures of the game. Modification by adaptation can also be implemented in the way of scoring. In Tim Hopper's scoring for pickleball, it is evident that equality is a main theme. If player 1 wins a game, the beginning score in game 2 becomes 15 love in favor of player 2. This modification encourages more realistic competition among different skill levels. By starting off with the culminating activity, students will see rather than be told how the progressions will help them understand how to perform more successfully. The progressions work towards breaking down the activity into smaller elements, and then students are given another chance to see how they can incorporate what they have learned in the progressions into the game that they began the lesson with. This allows for them to see change and be able to make change. TGFU enables an environment to exist where students of different abilities can compete against one another in an enjoyable way. Helping students appreciate games and understand why they play them will reinforce and encourage participation. Understanding why we do things is important for meaningful association. 
After game appreciation is evident, different forms of modifications can be implemented to create a competitive, fun environment where success and growth is evident among all students. TGFU categorizes games into four different categories. Net wall, invasion territory, target, and batting and fielding. Games are categorized according to tactical awareness, so soccer and basketball would both be under invasion territory, whereas badminton and tennis would both be under net wall. TGFU suggests that if a student learns a game under a certain category, say soccer, they will be able to take that tactical awareness they have learned and apply it to a different game in the same category, say basketball, and the chances of them learning that sport is significantly increased. This revelation is known as games literacy. Enough about TGFU, let's move on to sport education. Sport education model focuses on students engaging in authentic sporting experiences. Because this experience occurs in PE hours, all students are given equal opportunity to experience sport. In the SE approach to PE, the semester is laid out in the form of a season, as opposed to six days on one sport and then moving on. With affiliations to a team, formal competition, a culminating event, record keeping, and a festivity. There are four main goals that are addressed in the sport ed model. These goals include developing knowledge and skills, providing an environment where students can learn to adapt an active lifestyle into their everyday lives, give the opportunity for students to pursue excellence, and preserve the culture surrounding sport. How does sport education work? Students are put into teams at the beginning of the season. They remain on these teams all season, giving them a sense of belonging and cooperation. Each team member is allocated a job, which is to be done throughout the season. Teams are working towards a culminating activity, which is usually a tournament. Students are given the opportunity to be a teammate and take on a specific job within the team. These jobs can include coach, manager, team spirit leader, officiator, etc. The reason for creating team roles within the SE model is so that students are proactive with regards to their learning and take sport into their own hands. This gives students personal and team responsibilities, creating an environment that encourages deep understanding motivation, and cooperation. If a team member were to take on the role of equipment manager, their jobs would be to gather and organize equipment needed for the day, and they would also be responsible for putting that equipment away at the end of the day. So what is so great about the sport ed approach? It encourages independence and responsibility within a team. It offers an environment where all students can participate in authentic sport without discrimination, and it motivates students to learn and improve through the use of teamwork and a culminating event. Also useful in the sport ed approach is using modification by adaptation, which we saw in TGFU. In SE, we create an even playing field, reinforcing appreciation and fun. Some problems associated with SE is that it can be burdensome on teachers. Making resources and briefing students on being coaches and teaching peers can often take a lot of time. Another issue is that students do not have enough expertise, which often leads to generalized practice. Teachers also complain that they are restricted and cannot use expertise as much as wanted because learning is student-based. Now that we've looked at TGFU and sport education, let's take a look at how they can be combined with the clinic game day approach. Creating a desirable program that incorporates activities in order to address all the learning domains, cognitive, affective, psychomotor, and social, motivates students to learn and creates an environment where understanding is emphasized is not an easy task. What Alexander and Penny have attempted to create is a hybrid model that incorporates all of these characteristics into one approach called the Clinic Game Day model. The Clinic Game Day model is set up in a Clinic Day, Game Day, Clinic Day schedule. This approach includes both teacher and student mediated formats addressing the issues of expertise in sport education. The first day I'll talk about is the Clinic Day, which is teacher led and influenced by TGFU. This day is set up similar to TGFU in that it's a game, practice, game. In game one, a problem will arise, whether it's tactical or technical. During practice, this is time to resolve the problem. Game two then is the opportunity for students to work on what they have learned through practice and try and solve the tactical or technical problem. Teaching under the influence means essentially teaching day by day. What is taught on the clinic day is dependent on what occurs on the previous game day. So what happens in the game will influence what is put on the clinic lesson plan by the teachers. This is called bridging learning from day to day. On this day, teachers will also model 
different types of practice that can be used on game day by students. Teachers can stress the importance of game performance, the combination of technique and tactics, instead of skills. Therefore, students adopt the same principles when it is their turn to teach their peers. Following clinic day is a game day, which is student-led and influenced by sport education. Students will first lead a warm-up, then a practice, and then get into games. The goal of this is that students will conduct practices they have recently witnessed and learned on the clinic day. The benefits of this is that students will feel more comfortable imitating lessons they have seen and those who are being taught will already have a basic understanding of practice requirements and process. It is important that we encourage tactical awareness through sport education. Each game will have a halftime and a tactical timeout per half. Students have time to discuss tactical problems arising in the game. Where should I have been when that ball was passed? Or where should I run in that situation? Tactical posters can also be put up by teachers to serve as reminders. These posters can help students talk tactics using appropriate language and encourages the understanding aspect of TGFU. The teacher's role on this day is to be a facilitator of learning. This includes and may look like aiding students who ask for help, encouraging students to talk tactics with their team, and stepping in when further instruction is needed without disrupting the student-led learning. So why is the clinic game day model the best of both worlds? It encourages student independence, responsibility, cooperative relationships, authenticity of games, while still relying on teacher expertise. It balances teacher-mediated formats and student-mediated formats. It gives students background knowledge and resources to teach and coach their team, and acknowledges and caters to all learning domains. It encourages tactical awareness and game appreciation, and encourages teamwork and motivates students to improve as a team. The clinic game day model takes the best aspects of TGFU and SE and combines them. TGFU breaks down complex ideas and creates an environment where everyone can learn. Sport education motivates students to learn these ideas in an environment where cooperation is necessary. In the clinic game day model, students are more prepared to be responsible for their own learning and teaching their peers, reinforcing independence and responsibility, which is a key aspect of being active for life. Research indicates that students' academic learning improves when they are engaged in meaningful games and play activity. As Kirk has stated, if we work to experience activities that are inherently pleasurable and intrinsically satisfying, then there is a possible future for activities such as sport. We understand as educators it can sometimes be difficult to look at things in a different light from what we've been taught in the past. What we aim to do is make transitioning a little bit easier for people and to educate people that it is possible to transition teaching methods.